Hello everybody and welcome to the channel where the motto is If storing food is a mistake, at least it's a mistake we can eat. And to me that's a pretty good mistake. I've made far worse mistakes and it didn't turn out good. It wasn't something I could eat or undo. But anyhow, taking a look at this photo right here, I want you to remember something. They can also keep you out. They... It's a lot of people think, oh, they're there for protection. Not necessarily. They could also be there to keep you out, to keep you from getting in. But today I want to talk to you about what I talk, uh, storing, storing food. Now, I don't store an abundance of food or, or a super amount of food. To me, I probably do what I call a short-term storage where it's like three or four months just to get me over a hump in case there's hard times or not enough money. And to do that, it's not an easy task either. It's not because it can be expensive. Because you have to actually sit down, you have to calculate what it is you actually cook and what, you know, on a weekly basis. In other words, if you make, how often do you make macaroni and cheese during the week? How often do you make scalloped potatoes during the week? How often do you make those side dish dinners? There's, see, a lot of people buy that kind of thing. And so you have to calculate, and then that's how much you would have to buy. In other words, if you eat macaroni and cheese once a week, well, you, for two months you need eight boxes, and for four months you need 16. And that's how you have to calculate if you're just looking to store three months of food. Now, I don't care for macaroni and cheese, but I have a family member who does. So one box a month is fine. So if I wanted to store macaroni and cheese for uh, three or four months, I only need three or four boxes. The best way to try to buy things is when it's on sale. But I can tell you right now, sales are becoming harder and harder to find on things. They just are. I'm having a hard time. And I'm glad I've got most of what I have already because I don't like paying full price for things. And so that's the best way to what I call short-term storage. You know, look at uh, how much jelly you would use, how much peanut butter, everything that you would use over a three-month period of time. And then you store that, and that'll get you over a hump during hard times. Now... If you're looking to store really long term because you're thinking to yourself, well, I might run into trouble for three or four years or five. I don't feel that canned goods really work. There's a chance that they can spoil in the can. I know someone that that happened to. They bought a lot of canned goods back in the year 2000. And most of them ended up spoiled, and you know, because they thought everything was going to go down, and so they bought a lot, and everything spoiled. Um, they also lose nutritional value. Even canned goods that you can yourself, over time, loses nutritional value. And like I've said in other videos, I think that gardens are going to be a done away with. So, what can you do for long-term storage? The best thing and the cheapest thing is oatmeal and grits for breakfast. I'm sorry, but bacon and sausage and all that is going to go out the window. Pancakes, I will give you a recipe for your own pancake mix that you can make at home. I'm going to make a video on that and give you the recipe for it. And you don't need to run to the store and buy pancake mix. But you will need powdered milk and flour and baking powder okay so if you don't have powdered milk if you're interested in making your own pancake mix consider going out and buying a bag of powdered milk now another thing save your bread bags i'm going to show you something you can do with them that will help you through a pinch and save you money at the same time now another thing i would store for long term spam pinto beans and rice that would be it. And that's it. Because if it got that bad and it was that horrible, I ain't rich enough that I can buy buckets of these meal foods, you know, that's going to buy, 
you know, uh, you know, feed a family of four, you know, and I don't know, tried meals or whatever. I don't have that kind of money. And so if I was going to do something like long term for three years or something or more, it would be nothing but pinto beans because it's the cheapest bean and rice. And I would store some spam. I'm not a big spam person, but it's better than nothing. And that's what I would do. That would be the things that I would do. And I would store me some lard to, to do me. And that would be it. And there's not much you can do for long, long-term storage. Now, I know a lot of people out there say, well, you know, I've, I've had canned goods and for four or five years. That's fine. But I know people that live in places that it's super hot. They don't have that kind of space. They can't keep it in some dark, cool room. And it goes bad on them. And if you put all your eggs in that basket and that's what you do and then everything goes bad on you, then what? You have nothing. So I think it's better stick with grits and um, oatmeal, beans, and rice. And I put my grits and oatmeal in the freezer before I put them on my pantry shelf. I put them in there for a few days. Make sure that no critters come out in the end. And that's what I would store. And only that for long-term storage. That's it. Spam, grits, oatmeal, and pinto beans and rice. Okay? And I'll make a couple of more videos and give you some more ideas. And show you how you can stretch your food.